Hey everyone, this is another video that has nothing to do with gaming. Please feel free to pass it by. This is intended mainly for people in the area who will find this video sooner or later, I'm fairly certain. As you might know, I used to be an avid kayaker and racer. In fact, my very first YouTube video was about a casual kayaking trip with some friends a while ago. I also used to be involved with the only paddling club in the area, the Appalachian Canoe and Kayak Club. But nowadays, whenever someone reminds me of this group, I usually just go off on a tirade that, on its own, lacks any sort of context and probably sounds dubious at best. I mean, how could anyone, much less a kayaker, not support their local canoe and kayak club, right? Well, if you don't care about the context or background, you can skip this video and go straight to part two. If you want to know where I'm coming from and have about 10 minutes to kill, this video will fill you in on the boring background details. So I started kayaking in 2006. And over the next four years, I paddled a total of just over 1,400 miles. Maybe someday I'll make a video about all the crazy shit I've seen while out on the water, but that's beside the point. Anyway, the vast majority of those miles were up and back trips on the local rivers. I kept detailed notes of how far I'd gone, and I took thousands of pictures, both for the aesthetics and also for my validation, because figuring out exactly where you are on a river or in a bay when you don't have a GPS isn't always as straightforward as it sounds and I'd piece together my exact route after I got home with the help of satellite images. In those early years, I was a completionist explorer, and my goal was to complete each river, where I could say I'd paddled every mile of every local river plus its tributaries to my satisfaction. This usually meant going upriver to the point where I either couldn't turn my boat around, or to where I was doing more walking than paddling. Now, of course, flow rates, tides, rainfall, time of year, these things all have an impact on how far you can get at any given point. So, after I'd done the easy parts of river, I'd have to wait and then check the water levels online. So when the conditions were right, I'd go back and push a few extra miles up the rivers whenever I could. I always took a pair of tree shears with me because little things like tree canopies and dense forests just weren't going to stop me. As long as there was water ahead, I was getting through one way or another. Now one river I kept coming back to was the Oklahoma River, a 200 mile long river that bends around town on its way from south central Georgia down to the Gulf of Mexico. Even though it's the largest and closest river to Tallahassee, most people in town have never even heard of this river. And if they have, they probably couldn't tell you where it is. Most people know the Wakulla River, with its deep waters and frequent manatee sightings. Fewer people know of the Wasissa River, which is crystal clear, broad, it's a bird watcher's paradise, and definitely the most beautiful river in the area. But most paddlers in the area have never even stopped to look at the Oklahoma River, much less paddle it. Probably because from the bridges that cross it, it just doesn't look that remarkable. And this is why the river has remained the best kept secret of the good old boys and the few people adventurous enough to actually give it a chance. So what are people missing out on? Well, there's the fast narrow stretches of the Red Hills with its frequent oxbows and switchbacks. There's the beautiful sandbanks and the obstacle course in the middle upper river. There's the dense forests and the gently flowing deep waters below Tower Road. The wide open flat deep segments that are a racer's dream near Highway 90 the marsh maze on the east end of Lake Talquin, the rocky outcrops near the dam, the even larger sandbanks of the lower river, the forest maze where even experienced paddlers can get turned around as the river splits and rejoins in unexpected ways, the slowly broadening lower river where the tide first starts to show its influence, and finally the broad marshy brackish lower river which leads into the estuarial marshes of Oklahoma Bay. As I pass it through Florida, the river completely changes character about a dozen times, making it very difficult to get bored. During a series of record floods, I managed to complete the Oklahoma River, almost drowning in the process, and today I can say with confidence that I paddled more miles of this river than anyone currently alive. For a while I focused on other rivers in the area, but I keep being drawn back to the Oklahoma. There were prettier rivers and rivers with more interesting wildlife, but nothing in the area is exciting as the Oklahoma. Around this time, a few things changed in my kayaking routine. First off, I was told about the Texas Water Safari, one of the U.S.'s largest national canoe and kayak events, which also happens to be one of the most difficult. I was enthralled by the idea, and I made it my goal to take part in this 260-mile race. I bought a second boat, a bulky, heavy, plastic sea kayak, because my fiberglass pelican just wasn't going to cut it in a race. I didn't know shit about racing at the time, and it turned out that my new boat, the one I bought specifically for racing, was also not fit for racing. Well, that sure didn't stop me from trying. Around the same time, I learned of the U.S. Canoe Association and the Florida Competition Paddlers Association. 
I began traveling hundreds of miles every couple of weeks to take part in their races around the state. Despite all the kayaking I had been doing, I discovered exactly how out of shape I was, and I slowly improved my stamina, working my way up to their 30-mile challenge events. In my slow boat, and in poor shape, I usually came in last place, only beating those who failed to finish the races at all. Still, it was a great experience, and I loved it. My personal trips also changed in character, though. I was doing less exploration and more long-distance endurance paddling, or otherwise shorter kayak sprints. When I didn't feel like training, I'd spend my time at the Ocklockney River picking up trash. I basically adopted the river, either walking the river banks and landings and picking up trash there, or otherwise clearing whole sections of river, dragging my boat behind me, and filling it with trash as I went along. During a late night training session before the water safari, I thought to myself, you know what? There's this amazing river right next to Tallahassee, a river that no one knows about, but one that racers would absolutely fall in love with if they ever saw it. Unfortunately, it's also a river that needs some TLC, and for all the trash that I pulled out of it, you know, there's only so much that I can do on my own. So maybe a race on the river could be a sort of fundraiser for a group that does cleanups. I did some looking online and learned about the local chapter of Keep America Beautiful, which seemed like a perfect fit for hosting just such a race. I got in touch with their director and pitched the idea. I also got in touch with some of the longer distance paddlers in the competition group, and they also thought it was a great idea. So it was a no-brainer, win-win-win situation. Everyone was excited. We could raise awareness for the river, raise money for a local charity that does cleanup work, and the racers in Florida now had another in-state ultra-marathon that they could attend, making it one of only three such races at the time. Even though it was organized last minute, a handful of racers showed up for the grueling 59-mile event in the middle of the summer, all of them thoroughly enjoying it. And despite the small turnout, we considered it a success. Everyone had ideas on how to get the word out, how to improve the race, how to expand it to make it more inclusive without compromising the main event for the diehards. And we all look forward to meeting on the Ocklockney River for races in the future. Now it was after this race, after I'd taken part in the Texas Water Safari, and while I was following various leads and establishing new contacts in preparation for next year's event on the Ocklockney River, that I first learned about the Appalachian Canoe and Kayak Club. And we'll pick up there with part two. Thanks for watching.